hands on the Luke and Steel for another five points. I think it'll go, but when it does sell, it's too rich for my blood. Got a hundred shares of golf in the morning. It was up three quarters when it closed. Oh, and Chris, have the research department send me everything they got on that pipeline company. The stock was sold over the counter last month, and now it's listed on the American Exchange, and Marion has a hunch about it. Plane from the States on time. Gracias. I think a small amount of it should prove worthwhile. Look it over and take a chance on the Lucan Steel for another five points. I think it'll go, but when it does sell, it's too rich for my blood. Got a hundred shares of golf in the morning. It was up three quarters when they closed. Oh, and Chris, have the research department send me everything they got on that pipeline company. The stock was sold over the counter last month, but now it's listed on the American Exchange, and Marion has a hunch about it. Nevertheless, I think a small amount of it should prove worthwhile. Look it over and take a chance on the Lucan Steel for another five points. I think it'll go, but when it does sell... I sound like him, all right. For eight weeks, I almost can't recognize my voice from his. Have the research about it, me everything they got on that pipeline company. The stock was sold over the counter last month, but now it's listed on the American Exchange. And Marion has a hunch about it. Name? Harris Chapman. General description? Very wealthy. How well do you know him? I know him very well, but I've never met him or anyone connected with him. Except Marion Forbes. Harris Chapman was born in Seattle, April 3, 1913. His father's name, John W. Chapman, owned the Ford Agency and was one of the largest stockholders in the Seattle State Bank. His mother's maiden name was Mary Burke, and she was the only child of a Seattle attorney. John W. sold out and retired in 1940 and moved to California. Both are still living in La Jolla. Harris finished high school in 1931, then went to Notre Dame and finished Tulane Law School in 1938. Just as he was getting his practice rolling, Pearl Harbor caught him. He went into the Navy as an ensign where he grew a mustache because he thought his upper lip was too long and has worn it ever since. When he got out of the service, he developed eye strain and began wearing glasses, usually horn rims. He has a tendency toward hypochondria and carries around a miniature drugstore with him. Ever since the cancer scare, he's been using a filtered cigarette holder along with filtered cigarettes. His greatest fear is mental illness, which he believes is hereditary. Basic description, six feet, 195 pounds, gray eyes, 46 years old, brown hair, graying at the temple. That's no problem. He usually wears a hat and feels undressed without one. Your basic descriptions overlap on nearly every point except age. You may not really look like him, but counting on the general unreliability of descriptions, I would say you look exactly like him. Hobby, big game fishing. Usually Miami, but this year Mexico. The point of the whole thing is... The point is, some of us will do anything for money.
Made up till the end of the month. A boat? Page till the end of the month. All right. Who's Robert Wingard? He's manager of the radio station. And Bill McEwen, what does he do? Bill McEwen is a girl. Good. Billie Jean McEwen, 44. Unmarried. Your assistant, second in command. Practically runs the office staff. You know, that mustache is almost becoming. Young, socially prominent. When were they engaged? February 4th. Where was I born? Cleveland, Ohio. When did I first meet Chapman? In 1945, while he was still in service. What is my connection with Chapman's business? You're his private secretary. You've guided his financial career ever since you were responsible for the success of a couple of real estate deals back in 1949. Since then, you've been with him during and after office hours until you became his mistress and the financial brain behind him. Go on. From 1950 to 1955, you led him a little at a time into the big bull market, into IBM, Dow Chemicals, Phillips Petroleum, and DuPont. He rode it up all the way. Last summer, when the market showed signs of running out of steam, you began switching to defensive holdings, to utilities, high-grade preferreds, and bonds. What's his broker's name? Chris Lundgren. Tell me about Chapman's character. He's aggressive, even in the way he walks. He won't admit it, but he can carry liquor. Music doesn't mean anything to him, and he's a lousy dancer, but he thinks he's a big ladies' man. The past two years on fishing trips, he's picked up girls, usually young ones. He's not afraid to make scenes. He'll argue with anyone anywhere. Waiters don't impress him. He always adds up a check before he pays it. And he'll even send a dish back twice and refuse to tip a waiter if he thinks he's given him poor service. He's a loud mouth, but he knows what he wants and how to get it. What about his voice? Well, he's abrupt on the phone, at least in business matters. Never asks how the other party is, just says goodbye once and hangs up. Your name comes out almost Marin. He hits the first syllable of DuPont. And the U comes out I-U. DuPont. He slurs hundred a little more than most people, hundred. He still uses Roger once in a while, left over from his service days. Now give me the story of his life. Harris Chapman was born in Seattle, April 3rd, 1913. Father's name, John W. Chapman. Owned the Ford Agency and was one of the biggest stockholders in the Seattle State Bank. His mother's name was Mary Burke. John Chapman retired in 1940 and moved to Seattle. All right, once more. You were born in Cleveland, went to school at Stanford. Your mother died in your early teens and your father never remarried. He was a physician with a practice for over 40 years. Yes. Chris Chapman, how'd it go today? Remember, we're not buying until we see those quarterly dividends. I don't care how high it's going, I'd rather sell consolidated first. How was I? Uh, still, maybe just a shade too abrupt. But good. Good. Then he left you for Francis Blaine, who had what he'd always wanted. Youth, money, social position. You knew so much about him. Couldn't you see this coming? See it? What'd you expect me to do about it? Compete with a 24-year-old professional virgin? I saw it all right. I had a front row seat. You know, he actually offered me six months pay if I would quit. He'll pay all right. No, I 
I've got to know everything about him that these people know, plus everything about these people that he knows. There's been a thousand business and personal details. It, it's impossible. Of course it's impossible. No mind could absorb all that in such a short time. But you don't have to. All you have to do is make one or two short telephone conversations each day without making a dangerous mistake. What does it really take apart from the voice? Some ability in improvising and bluffing, a grasp of the most obvious facts, and a few that only Harris Chapman could possibly know. Well, uh... Don't forget you're always in control of the conversation. You're the boss. Whenever you feel you're getting in over your head, change the subject. Or as a last resort, since there's nothing connecting you but a piece of wire, break it. You'll call back later with the right information and say we were cut off. You'll still have the tapes as prompters. All right. Let's get it over with. You'd better get going. He'll be at the hotel in 45 minutes. Have you got the letter? You'll call me as soon as he arrives. Senor? Would you give this letter to Mr. Harris Chapman when he arrives? Certainly, sir. Five, five, four, three, two, one. He's here as you described him. He's got the letter. He's opening it. Well? Well, he doesn't seem very happy. Hang up, he's gonna phone right now. Five, five, four, three, two, one. Harris Chapman, I just registered. Hello? Oh, Mary? What is this? I thought you were in New York. What is this letter? Harry? Now, look, if this is some gag to get me over to your place, I thought we agreed it was all over. This won't help. But this is business, Harry. Big, old 1955 business. You know how they start digging once they're tipped off. So that's the way it is. Blackmail. I never really thought you'd stoop to a thing like this. I guess Francis was right. You know what I think of... Never mind what you think. If you need money, why don't you take the six months' pay I offered you? I... You take that six months' pay and... You filthy little... This is Mr. Chapman again. Let me have that number back. Five, five, four, three, two, one. Taxi. Wait five minutes. Right. Well, good luck.
Just a minute. from Seattle. She knows me. Are you crazy? Look, who is this? Will you please call Mary on the phone? I haven't got it all night. Look, wise guy. What the hell is this? I just arrived. I'm tired and I don't feel like playing games. Now, maybe you also want to talk to me about my 1955 income tax. Is that it? Well, listen, my friend. I know something about the law and I also know something about shakedown. Now, put her on or I'll turn that letter over to the police. What? Hey. What are you people up to? Why do you sound like me? What's that woman trying to do to me? I offered a six months pay. Harris, for the love of God, who is this man? Why, it's you, Harris. If you can replace me, I can replace you. Did you get the tarp?
Yes? Uh, Mr. Chapman, we have not been able to place your call through to Seattle. Would you like us to try again? No, it's too late now. I'll put the call through tomorrow. Oh, and will you see that I'm not disturbed in the morning, please? I'd like to sleep late. Certainly, sir. No calls till we hear from you. Uh, will you please just hang the, the sign, do not disturb, on the doorknob outside, so the maid will not come in? Where is it? Uh, on the inside now. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Mr. I'll be in Seattle tomorrow and in the office Monday morning. Now, what about Carrera? I've talked to him. Don't call me until you've arranged everything.
Let's see. I shampooed the rug, closed the house, returned the car and boat, and as far as anyone knows, I've just caught the noonday flight for the States. But as for Harris Chapman... Your party from Seattle, Washington on the line. Put her on. One moment, please. Remember, you're groggy. Just got up. Her pet name, Angel. Loathes Mary and adores things. Honeymoon definitely. Paris, Acapulco out. Hates fishing. Get her talking about wedding, attendance, gal. Go ahead, please. Hello, friend. Paris, darling. Angel, how are you? I tried to call when I arrived, but I couldn't get through, and then it got kind of late. I miss you. Me too. How's your room? Oh, it's all right, I guess, but uh, I understand there's a better hotel, newer, the Miramar. I'm going to move there later today. Wait a minute. What is the name? Miramar. Miramar. Right. Or oh, an angel. Thank you. The what? The book. It's a good one. <laughs> That's true, but I will. I gotta keep busy nights, you know. <laughs> That's what the book's for. <laughs> Very good. I've got something else for you. What is it? A guess. A surprise. Well, look, Angel, uh, save it, will you? Uh, I'm late as it is. I gotta see a man about a fish. <laughs> All right, darling. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm going to go to San Francisco tomorrow for a few days at the garret, so I'll call you. I love you. I love you. Oh, Angel, tell Chris to call me at the Miramar, will you? Yes, Master. I love you. Roger and out. Switched to the daytime staff by now. Front desk, please. Officina Principal. This is Harris Chapman. Will you get my bill ready, please? And send somebody up to the bags. Right. Thank you.
Chapman, Harris Chapman. I called you earlier today. Of course, Mr. Chapman. We have your rule ready. Now, if you will, please sign the register. Thank you. Take Mr. Chapman to 146. Well, I'm late for an appointment. I'm sure the room's fine. Here. Just take the luggage up. As you wish, Mr. Chapman. Unload the warden. 
Goodbye. Come in. I'm a friend of Cranlor's. Will you have dinner with me? Her hair is too light. May I come in? Uh, wait a minute, honey. I changed my mind. Here. Tell you. But, senor, that would be dishonest of me. Oh, go on. Buy Carlos a steak. Here, go on. Oh, ay, senor. Muchas gracias. I know you from somewhere. Does he know me, or does he know Chapman? Sorry, you must be mistaken. You don't seem familiar to me. Wait a minute. Tampa. That's it. In Florida. Two years ago, fishing. Must be Chapman. Watch out. I've got it. Henderson. Charlie Henderson from Kansas. No, sorry, no. The name's Chapman. Harris Chapman from Seattle. Oh. Sorry. Certainly look like old Henderson. That was some character. You know, Mr. Chapman, looking so much like him, you should let I think she'll do. About old Excuse that me. I beg your pardon, but don't I know you from somewhere? Wait a minute. Alaska, seal hunting. I know. Miss Lonely Heart. The name's Corey Scott. And mine is... Chapman. Harris. Harris Chapman. <laughs> Won't you sit down, Mr. Chapman? Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> I love Shannon. Just live on it. <laughs> Why don't you? If I were you, I wouldn't settle for anything else. You think so? You know it. Nothing but the best for you, I can tell. How can you tell? Oh, I can tell. Listen, I'm, uh, I'm gonna do some shopping tomorrow. How about coming along? Well, I don't know. I have a date to go sailing. I can make it worth your while. I'll call you tomorrow, then.
now, who is it? Billy McEwen, from the office. Oh, yes, Billy, uh, what is it? Mr. Chapman, this whole place is in an uproar. What is it? We've got to have a combination to that old thing. I called Marion, she says you're the only one who has it. Get a hold of yourself. Get a hold of yourself, Billy. Now, what old safe are you talking about and what's happened? Mr. Chapman, the old safe that was moved out of here about six months ago when you bought the new one, it was stored in the warehouse. And just before you left, you told Mr. Elkins to sell it to the junkyard where yesterday he and some men moved it outside of the loading platform. It was unlocked. Well, in the afternoon, after school, some first graders... Oh, no, not that. Not one of the children. A dog. Judy Weaver's miniature poodle. Why, do you mean to tell me that the whole town... Mr. Just a minute, huh? Telegram for you, senor. What? It came in the middle of the night. Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, thanks. Billy, I, uh, I'm sorry about the interruption. I, uh, I sent some clothes out to the balance to be pressed. Now, uh, about that combination, here it is. Um, right to 32, left two turns to 19, and um, right three turns to six. That's it. Right to 32, left two turns to 19, and right three turns to six. Right, and uh, send someone over to see Mrs. Weaver right away. See that she calms down. Oh, uh, someone who's good at handling people like uh, Mrs. Carson, you know. And uh, by duty, the uh, the biggest stuffed toy you can find. One of those thirty-five dollar jobs, you know. And see that everything returns to normal, huh? Yes, Mr. Chapman. I'll do my best. Right, you do that, Billy. Bye. -bye.
show you one beautiful picture, no? You mean you don't want a picture with this magnificent fish? Well, once I catch him, my kicks are over. But I'll tell you what, since you think it's so magnificent, I'll let you have it. It's yours. Please. Mr. Chapman, the friend of yours came by to see you this morning. What? He said he talked to your office from Mexico City and found out that you were here. He decided to stop off on his way home. Who was it? Uh, a friend of yours from Seattle. Who? Here, a Judge Kendall and his wife. They are staying at the Palacio and said they will be back this afternoon. George Kendall, judge, wife Zane, Edna, very social, close friends of Francis's mother. He met them a year ago at a party given by the Blaines. Hello? Mr. Hyatt Chapman, please, San Francisco calling. Speaking, go ahead. One minute, please. Francis, make it short, got to move. Go ahead, please. Hello, Angel. Better than that. I think I caught the biggest swordfish of the season. Really? Oh, yes. I'm the local hero. I'm so proud of you. Oh, Angel, can you forgive me? I've got a hot real estate deal cooking, and uh, I've got to call Chris right away. Oh, I want to talk to you. Well, I'm with you, Angel, but uh, we can do that later, okay? This is important, you know. Okay, darling. I'll call you tonight. Right. Goodbye, Angel, and kisses. Yes? Mr. Chapman, this is Corey Scott. Hello there. Glad to hear from you. Are we going shopping? Well, uh, something has come up, and I'm, uh, I'm in the process of moving. I, I wonder if I could make it up to you later. Could you join me for a drink at the Bahia this evening? Well, all right. Where is it? Oh, the cab driver will show you. Uh, 8 o'clock sound all right? Just fine. See you. See you. Here, I'm Harris Chapman. Is my bill ready? Just a minute, Mr. Chapman. Thank you very much, and come again, sir. 
Patrick. Gracias, señor. Give me a minute at our hotel, please. Yes? Senor Chapman? Yes? San Francisco calling. One moment, please. Hello? Uh, yes, Angel. What happened, darling? Don't tell me you moved again. I couldn't believe it when I got your message. Oh, it's because of Marion, Angel. Marion? Uh, yes, I've heard she's down here. She's been trying to reach me at the Miramar. For some reason, she's trying to get to me, but uh, I don't want any part of it. I was sure she was in Seattle when I left. Where could she walk? I don't know, and I don't care. She's probably down here for the weekend. Uh, right now, she doesn't know where I am, so don't worry, Angel. I'm not going to see her. It's finished between us. Darling, come home. Tonight or tomorrow? Well, as soon as I finish this real estate deal, Angel, uh, I miss you, too. Oh, now, you have a little more faith in me than that, haven't you? Of course, darling, I'm being very silly. What are you doing this evening? <laughs> Reading? <laughs> I bet. And you? We're going to the ballet. As a matter of fact, I'm late. Darling, I think I'll stay with the Garrett until you return. I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, Angel. Uh, give my best to the Garrett's. I will. Goodbye, darling. I love you. I love you. Front desk, please. Reception. Yes, sir, Mr. Chapman. Yes, sir. I'm expecting a Miss Marin Forbes this evening. Forbes? F-O-R-B-E-S? That's right, Forbes. Uh, now, she may be using a different name, but uh, send her up anyway. I see. Just let me know when she's on her way up, huh? Very well, Mr. Chapman. Thank you. Another. Chapman, please. Number 228. Thank you. No, I guess, senorita. Yes? Mr. Chapman, Miss Forbes is on her way up. Thank you. Forgot. Do you mind, Corey? There's a telephone call I just have to make. Oh, no, no. You sit right there. <laughs> it's uh, just a social obligation. <laughs> May I have the Palacio Hotel, please? Oh, you look wonderful. <laughs> uh, Judge Kendall, please. Say, hey, uh, are you hungry? Mm-hmm. Good. We'll go downstairs later and... Judge! Oh, how are you, Judge? What a pleasant surprise. We were just leaving Mexico City when I talked to your office. They told me you were down here. Thought we'd say hello on the way home. Well, I'm certainly glad you did. Francis with you? Well, no, no. Uh, she's busy in San Francisco, but uh, we call each other every day on the phone. <laughs> uh, say, uh, uh, how's Mrs. Kendall? She's fine. She's right here with me. Oh, she is? Oh, well, may I speak with her? All right. See you later, my boy. Hello, Harry. Edna, dear, how are you? Fine, how are you? Isn't Francis with you? Uh, no, but we keep in touch. Why, you poor dear, you're all alone. You're dining with us this evening. Oh, what are you doing now? Uh, come and have a drink with us. Well, as a matter of fact, right now, I'm in a whole sea of paperwork. Are you working? Well, you know how it is, dear. Business and pleasure. <laughs> 
Be careful. What are you doing? Hello? Edna? Edna? If I ever run into the candles again, it'll be nothing but pure accident. I'm terribly sorry. Here, use this. I'll really have to make this up to you now. Later. Waiter! 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 I asked for this steak rare and it's still medium. Now, maybe if you wrote the chef a note, we'd get some... I will take it back again. Thanks. Never mind, I'm not hungry anymore. You want some dessert? Come on, let's have the check. How do you like that? All right, Marion, let's get out of here. I am sorry about the sick. All right, it's all right. Let's go, Marion. Why did you call me Marion? Why did you call me Marion? Did I? Good man. Has anyone ever told you you're a good man? Thank you very much, Senor. Uh -huh. Come on, man. Good old man. Why do you keep calling me Marion? I'm sorry. You remind me of someone I know. <laughs> hey, nothing but the best for you, baby. <laughs> nothing but the best. You got what it takes. Hey, come on, Joey. Dad. Oh. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> hey, wait a minute now. Listen, anything you want, huh? anything you want, you just name it. Ooh. Mr. Chapman. Are you all right, Mr. Chapman? Chances are that $3,000 will get her out of town by noon. Very good friend, Mr. Harris Chapman. 
How do you do, Mr. Chapman? You know, of course, we have received your $10,000 from Seattle this morning. Yes, I do. Mr. Carrera says you would like to open an account. That's right. Well, I do not think that will be a problem, Mr. Chapman, if you will just sign these two cards. Until I hear from you. Till next week, then. Eh? Until next week. I don't care what she thinks. I know a profit when I see one. But Mr. Chapman, almost a quarter of a million dollars. I'll tell you what, Chris. If that money isn't here by Saturday morning, you can handle Marion Forbes' account. Okay, Chris? Very well, Mr. Chapman. Okay. Goodbye. <coughs> Give me long distance, please. This is Harris Chapman speaking. I want to place a long-distance call to Seattle, Washington, in the United States. That's right, to Chapman Enterprises. That's Main 3, 8410. Yes, Miss Forbes. F-O-R-B-E-S. That's right, Marion Forbes. Yes? Mr. Chapman? Speaking. I have your Seattle call on the line. Put her through. Hello, Harris. I'm just calling to tell you to stop directing my life, Chris's business, or anything regarding my future actions. And to tell you that I'm going through with this deal, whether you like it or not, and if you don't, you're fired! According to plans, she'll be here this weekend. And so will a quarter of a million. So until then... Like the Riviera. <laughs> well, before you know it, Angel, it'll be over the pole and Paris. <laughs> of course, we'll leave the restaurants up to you, Angel. Yeah. Near where? Cannes? What? Coco Van. Oh, but Angel, you know I don't eat chicken. No, oh, Angel. All right. And then what? Great. We'll sail from Cannes to Palma and then on to Capri. Angel, can't you see us on deck looking at the moonlight on the water? Yeah. I understand the water in Capri is the clearest in the world. <laughs> they say you can even see the fish in the water. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Angel. You'll have to let me get in some real fishing if you expect me to take you to the opera. Oh. Uh, yeah. And we'll sit at those sidewalk cafes doing like the Romans do. And in Venice, what the Venetians do, who get a gondola. They tell me there's nothing like it by moonlight. What with the music and all, you'll love it. And I love you too, Angel. Just a few more days, Angel. Goodbye, Angel. My name is Harris Chapman. I understand my money has arrived and has been cleared. Uh, un momento, señor. Oye, Juan, el señor se llama Harris Chapman, que le llegó un dinero. Mr. Harris Chapman? That's right, I have an account here. Yes, Mr. Chapman. I suppose you want to endorse the money that we have just received. No, I want it in cash. Cash? That's right. One moment, señor. Llama al director Francisco.
Good afternoon, Mr. Chapman. Good afternoon. Uh, do I understand uh, you want uh, the sum in cash? In cash. As you wish. Quiero comparar las firmas. Sí, señor. Would you sign here, please? Thank you. How would you like it, sir? I'd like it to fit in here. Muy bien. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez mil. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, veinte mil. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, States on time. Drive safe. <laughs> Count it. I trust you. <laughs> 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 Don't you? Your little blackmail note. Uh, you know who they'll be looking for, don't you? They'll be looking for Harris Chapman. And they'll never think of looking for him in the bottom of the ocean. I've established enough evidence around town that a certain Marion Forbes has been escorted by... <laughs> Your fiance, this friend. 
Francis Blaine? <laughs> or have you two met before? Your plan. <laughs> Francis Blaine. I spoke to her every day. I even called her in San Francisco. Sure you did. With the help of the Mexican police, you called her. <laughs> Miss Blaine, we want to thank you for your courage and patience. But you must understand, we had to wait to see how deeply involved this Marion Forbes was. I think we've heard enough. Vamos. I don't understand. What made you suspicious? I wasn't. I came down here to surprise him. I loved him. <laughs> Let us go, senor. What is your real name? 